How does anger ruin my relationship? <laughs> well, this one to most people should be pretty obvious, I, I would think. But, but if it was so obvious, you'd wonder why so many people still <laughs> tend to display anger so much in yeah. a relationship. Um, let's again look at the underlying reasons why we revert to anger. Yep. And there's quite a lot of them, actually. And, and, and with all of these reasons that we're giving, they're not exhaustive lists. You know, they're, they're, they're quite small lists. Yep. Uh, just that we want to dedicate to the topic at this point. Um, and anger, you know, there is quite a long re list of reasons why we may wish to engage in anger. But there's some primary underlying reasons why anger, we think anger is an effective tool mm -hmm. in our relationship. Yeah. So let's go through some of them. Okay. First one, anger helps me to feel powerful and in control of my partner rather than just feeling my own feelings and emotions. Correct. So power and control, again, another yeah. problem similar to arrogance, but yes. here we're reverting to actually a violent response, emotional response, anger in order to gain power and control. It's usually usually done because something's got out of control in our, mm -hmm. in our opinion, and we want to regain the control that we had, mm -hmm. right? And that's the reason why we revert to the anger. So basically it's a terrible uh, indictment on our feeling of the other person's will because we want control of their will and, uh, and, and therefore demonstrate, should demonstrate to us that we have not learnt anything yet about free will and its use. Um, but it's, uh, when, it, when it's used in such a way, it's basically used to regain control. You know, the control has been lost, mm -hmm. in our opinion, and we wish to regain control yeah. back to how, what we believe, you know, how we believe the relationship should be. Yeah. Okay, well, next one follows on from that. We use anger in order to have our partner meet our, ex our addictions and demands. Yes, and usually, again, this is about regaining their, you know, meeting our expectations and demands. So, in other words, we have a lot of expectations and demands that we're constantly putting on our partner. When they meet most of them, we're very, very happy, <laughs> we think. Yeah. <laughs> it would be the best way to put it. Because actually our soul is getting destroyed further while it's happening, so our condition is degrading. But we think we're happy. But as soon as our partner stops meeting one of those additions or demands, we're very, very unhappy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to get them to go back to meeting the, the expectation or demand, we project a lot of anger and rage on them to manoeuvre them back into a place where they will feed our addiction again. Yeah. Yep. And if we're using anger, it's, it's not subtle. We're trying to force them, aren't we? Correct. Yeah. We're trying to force them. Passive aggressive anger, by the way, is exactly the same as aggressive anger. Passive aggression is also a method of punishment and resentment. And it's also a method of you, we use to force the person back into control. Mm -hmm. So passive aggression is things like, I'm not having sex with you for a week because you did this or that. Or I'm not going to cook for you because you did this and that. Or I'm not going to go to work for you because you did this and that. Or I'm going to go out with my mates and party uh, for the next three weeks because you did this and that. You know, these are all passive aggressive ways of managing our desire to get the person back into control. Yeah. And that's just as bad as an aggressive way yeah. to do the same thing. Yeah. We also use anger in the context of a relationship simply to deny our fear and to make our partner feel responsible for our fears. Yes, a lot of times anger comes up when we're afraid. So, so you know, fear is the major trigger for anger. And, and because of that, we're now getting angry because we really in denial, are in denial of a fear that something, oh, that has occurred in our environment. Which fear, by the way, God is trying to expose and release through the laws that God has but which fear we are also in complete, usually, denial of or definitely in emotional denial of. Mm -hmm. And so we try to avoid it and we avoid the feeling and the experience of it. And whenever somebody triggers the fear, in other words, whenever somebody makes us feel that fear, or that fear rises within us again, it, it doesn't really matter who that person is that triggered it. We generally will blame the people closest to us that we can get away with dumping on for it. And that usually is our partner. We can yeah. get away with a lot worse treatment generally with our partner than we can get with away with with other people. 
And so what we generally do, no matter who triggers our fear, whether it be someone at work or someone, you know, the government or someone else, <laughs> even our children or anybody, we will normally want to revert to blaming our partner mm -hmm. for not mitigating this fear, not making it go away. Yeah. Or at least for them to be the outlet for, for our pent up anger anger lack of desire to feel our fear Correct. we want an outlet and very often we see people don't we using their relationship as really like their outlet for all the emotions they feel like they can't express outwardly to the world very sad it's you very should be sad. treating your partner better yeah. than you treat anyone in the world although you know from god's perspective you should be treating your partner the same mm -hmm. as what you treat anyone in the world um but most people on earth would say, you know, at least I should be treated better than the same, more than the same. And the reality is most of the time we're treating our partner worse, worse. than we would treat anyone else. Yeah. And that's a shame. It is. Because it, it just creates gap between mm -hmm. us and our partner. The best, from God's perspective, the best way to treat our partner is equal to the way we treat anybody else with the exception of a few areas one of them is regarding the soulmate relationship with regard to sexuality, sexuality. And, and emotional closeness in the soulmate relationship which would which would only be with your partner mm. so but aside from that you would treat them equally with everyone else and uh, and if that's not happening then already the partnership is in a state of breaking down yeah yeah okay a couple of other things we use anger for mm -hmm. Simply to attempt, uh, sorry, to attempt to avoid personal responsibility for yes. our, our other feelings. For emotion or yeah. even for what we should do yeah. or, or even for taking action. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we project anger at a person because if we really felt about the issue, we'd have to leave them or if we really felt about the issue, we'd have to do something else that we don't want to do. And so we get angry with them instead. So that, and it gets them to have to do the actions. They have to take all the actions. They have to do all the things that we didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's the purpose of the anger, to have control over somebody, have power over them and get them to do what we want. And so, you know, a lot of the times we don't realize while we're projecting this kind of anger, we're, all we're doing is demonstrating our desire for power and control and our desire to manipulate and our desire to harm the other mm -hmm. person. And, and yeah, very sad, mm -hmm. very sad to see that happening in a relationship. It's very sad to see that happening in any relationship, let alone a partner relationship. Yeah, yeah. Okay, final thing. My anger prevents me from being emotionally open. So I might use anger in a relationship simply to avoid emotional intimacy with my partner. Yes. And this is the irony of anger, is that anger destroys emotional openness and sensitivity for both parties actually so anger isn't the feeling of emotion actually mm -hmm. not in the way that will heal you yeah. anger is the expression of emotion to harm others which is a completely different state than actually working through the experience of your emotion now the appropriate way to deal with anger is to go out and bash something or you know to go out and yell and scream if you're really really frustrated in the relationship that's the appropriate way to deal with your anger if you do that you will eventually find the underlying emotion that you're avoiding the sadness or the fear that is being triggered or the sense of inferiority or worthlessness that's being triggered by whatever has happened will be triggered and you'll start to feel it and you'll let yourself release it but while you remain angry in, a, in your relationship and project that anger and blame on others it's highly unlikely you'll choose to take a more responsible action with your anger so can I clarify though, because I feel that I've had this experience about anger simply being used as a tool to prevent emotional intimacy. Yep. So there might not be any other purpose other than, oh, uh, we're getting closer and I feel and frightened. Correct. I don't want to feel that, so I'm just going to be globally angry yes. because I, I don't want to feel that fear. Yes, it's a tool to avoid your fear, the yep. fear in this case of intimacy. Yeah. And, and many people in relationships want their relationship to be this close. They don't want it to be this close, wider, and they don't want it to be this close, close as to be touching each other. Yeah. They want it to be this close permanently. Yeah. So when one party goes a bit closer than that, they get angry straight away. 
Yeah. But when that party goes further away than their, what they would desire, they also get angry. Yeah. Either one makes them angry, right? Yeah. They get angry when they have emotional distance and they get angry when there's more emotional closeness because what they want is only a certain gap. Mm -hmm. They want a certain level of control over the relationship. They don't want to fully give their heart to the relationship and they don't want the other person getting them into a state where they have given themselves fully to the relationship. And so what they do is maintain a gap yeah. and the gap can't be too big and it can't be too small. Yeah. It has to be exactly that gap. Yeah. And a lot of anger in relationships is caused by people wanting to maintain a specific gap in their relationship between mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we've said. Which remember was our problem, wasn't it? it like definitely. Try, every time I'd get closer, you'd be further away. Yeah, every yeah. time I move a bit further away, because you now want to be further away, you'd want me to be closer. <laughs> Absolutely. And I couldn't even really tell you what I was angry about. I was just angry yeah. because I... You I was... weren't getting the gap maintained. Yep. Yeah. And instead, there was a triggering of loneliness and everything when I go further away, or a trigger of emotional and sexual intimacy when I'm closer. Yeah. And Which, you don't want either. Yes. And so you just maintain a gap. Yeah. And that way you don't have to feel the loneliness that from the relationship breakdown, and you don't have to feel the terribly uh, overpowering emotions of emotional intimacy and sexual intimacy. Yeah. And so you get to maintain the gap. Yeah, mm. exactly. It's a big issue. Mm. So we've said basically anger is a method to try to control our partner. Mm -hmm. It's um, an attempt to force our partner to use their will to meet some of our addictions or demands. Mm -hmm. It's uh, used in denial of fear and it's used in denial of personal responsibility for whatever emotion is coming up. It might mm. not just be fear. And if we look at each of those things that it causes, mm -hmm. you can see that, yeah, if you're going to stay in that place, then your relationship's going to get ruined, for yeah. sure. Yeah. It's, going to, it's a terribly bad habit to keep, on, to keep on staying enraged or in resentment with your partner and then expect your relationship to improve because it will not improve. Yeah. It cannot improve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about some specific additional things about anger mm -hmm. and the impact that has on a partner relationship. So, anger causes me to take out my past hurt on my partner or myself. Now, this is a, a good point, I feel. Mm, yeah, it basically, a lot of our anger comes from our addictions not being met. And our addictions are all about um, unfelt uh, emotion from our childhood of hurt mm -hmm. that we want somebody else to make go away by feeding our addiction. And, and so what we finish up doing is projecting our belief systems and our addictions onto our partner. And, and so a lot of the times we're angry with our partner for things they haven't even personally done. Yeah. What, who's done them is usually our parents. Our, and opposite, on, a lot of the time our same gender parent <coughs> it would have inculcated these particular emotions into us and our opposite gender parent would have done things to us. Mm -hmm. and, and as a result, we have the same, same viewpoints as our parents have about the gender that we're living with. Yeah. And, uh, and as a result, we have a tendency to blame them for all of the unhealed stuff that happened in our childhood. Yeah. Very yeah. sad, really. Very sad. Mm. And um, we've mentioned there that anger causes me to take out that past hurt either on my partner or on myself. And again, I can yeah. see where this is something where... I've, I've exerted a lot of anger towards myself as well, and mm. that's had a very detrimental effect on our relationship in yes. the past. So in the extreme, uh, when you take out your hurt on yourself, you'll start to abuse substances, alcohol, drugs, in order to you know, mask the pain you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. In the less extreme, you'll, you'll always be putting yourself down, be pessimistic, never, never really taking charge of your life and unfortunately that places huge demands emotionally on your partner yeah because then they have to take com command of your life take control that's what you're trying to force them into doing to prove their love of you yeah and uh, and, and it's a terribly demanding thing to do to your partner and whenever they don't do that you get angry with them yeah and that, yeah. that's also very sad yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay all right anger can cause me to believe that my partner is the same as all of the other people who are the same gender as, as my, partner. my partner. Correct. So we generalise and blame and... Yep. 
So, so we notice a man down the street, you know, he was treating his wife bad, so we come home and yell at her husband. Because <laughs> we think that he's going to do the same thing at some point in the future and he needs to be just kept in line. <laughs> it's also a bit deeper than that, isn't it? Oh, if course. we've been harmed by our, so the, the same gender as our partner in our childhood, then obviously when we're angry, we're just going to generalise that onto our partner who yes. is of the same gender. Yes, unfortunately, this is why uh, our partnership often turns into be the worst relationship we have yeah. because we're projecting the most negative emotions towards our partner than we, end, uh, than we are towards any person. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. sad that, you know, we start out wanting to have closeness and intimacy and end up with destroying closeness and intimacy because we treat our partner worse than we treat anybody else. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, because we're generalising. The next way it happens is that we hold on to resentment about past issues in the relationship. Or in past relationships. Or from past frequent. relationships. Or yeah. from our childhood. Resentment is such a powerful emotion. It, it's worse than anger. Anger is the instant response of, you know, rage towards a particular situation. Resentment is the build-up of resentment and hatred over long periods of time of having suppressed anger. And resentment is a very, very destructive emotion upon our soul and also upon our relationship. Destructive because it, it will cause us in the long run to do very significantly evil things if we are not careful. Mm -hmm. And this is resentment is, is caused by not feeling anger when it arises and suppressing it each time it arises. And in the end, you get a build-up of this anger and anger, and it turns into this seething resentment that we notice in many relationships. Where And, and the sad thing about seething resentment is that, is that it causes you then to make some very, very bad and evil decisions mm -hmm. with regard to your par partner. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also in regard to your children, unfortunately and it can cause a lot of personal soul damage yep. to, to yourself. And many people who arrive, and there are billions of people who arrive in the spirit world in seething resentment and hatred, and it takes many of them many years to overcome because they need to go through every single thing that they got angry about. Mm. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is start doing that now. by choice now. Yeah. Yeah. rather than having more and more seething resentment build up, yep. causing the complete destruction of all of your relationships. Yeah, mm. yeah. So there you're really talking <coughs> about anger as a form of punishment. And obviously when we're punishing our partner, we're very far from the state of loving them, aren't we? Yeah, once we get into the state of punishing, uh, using anger to punish, we're really already in a lot of resentment. And, uh, and there's already now a state of hatred being developed. And punishment is the desire to not just pull somebody back in line, but to make that person feel really bad about what they've done yeah. in the past. And you don't resolve problems in a relationship by trying to force the other person into feeling bad about what they've done. That being said, a relationship can't improve if the party who's done something bad isn't repentant. So, so while repentance is a requirement to have a good relationship, Forcing repentance is never possible. It has to be a voluntary action mm. on the part of the person who's done something wrong. And whenever you use resentment to punish a person, you're actually creating more problems rather than less in the relationship. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So there's quite a lot caused by anger. <sighs> And you can see that every one of those things would definitely has the potential to completely destroy a relationship. Mm -hmm. So rather than choosing anger, we're better off learning how to proper, properly feel anger, which is a lot about taking responsibility for the anger and in, more importantly, taking responsibility for the emotion underneath that causes the anger, whether that be fear or a feeling of superiority or expectation or demand. We need to feel those emotions if we're ever going to cure our own anger and therefore you know, build the relationship rather than destroy it. Yeah. Mm. Excellent.
Yeah. Good? Thumbs up. Okay. Yeah, with anger, we just want to add to the anger issue that anger is a, is a major cause of violence. Mm. So oftentimes relationships resort to violence because of the build up of anger and resentment. So obviously it's going to cause a lot of problems in the, in the relationship and, and, uh, and historically has even caused many relationships to resort to such violent means that they kill the other party. Mm. So, you know, it's definitely a quality that needs to be eradicated from our life if we're ever going to have a good relationship.